uh, it was tough to come back because Koala Sugar Company uh, went out of business, I think 1970, just right after I graduated. So the community was in crisis. People were looking for different jobs. You know, people were unemployed. Um, the hotels started being built in South Kohala. So a lot of people had to change their jobs from sugar plantation workers. You know, they had been become dependent on Kohala sugar. And now they had to, most of them went to work for the hotels. So there was that change and transition at, in the 70s into the 80s. And I think that was rough for Kohala for a while. They were also looking for alternative agricultural um, methods to replace sugar or to find other types of employment. So that was going on too. So it was a rough time for Kohala. Kohala has changed in the sense that there's different types of agriculture now. There's a whole bunch of newcomers now. I mean, there's, you know, different, different people own the different, the shops in Kapa'au, in Havi. So I keep seeing the changing of the businesses. I think there's more stability in some sense, and then tourism came in. So a lot of the shops are dependent on tourism, like the art galleries and the tourists, you know, paraphernalia. And of course, there's tons of people now going to Pololu Valley. So, yeah, the, the economy has completely changed. It is what it is, you know. I mean, you can't... <sighs> Kohala Sugar was one of the last sugar companies to close in the whole state. So people were holding on to it. But, you know, it went the way as the other sugar plantations went. People left. I remember people saying, oh, what happened to that family? And they said, oh, they moved to Honolulu. You know, they had to get a job there. So a lot of people left. And uh, people had to learn a new occupation, you know, from working with various aspects of the sugar production. You know, a lot of people were in the sugar mill itself. I remember that. Um, so people had to learn, you know, to become hotel workers, which is a whole different situation, you know, with the tourism and statehood coming in to Hawaii. Statehood, you know, August 1959, so that changed a lot of things too. So I think people just had to adjust and readapt, and I don't know, you know, maybe some people didn't do it well, but that's what happens in life. We were most, a lot of us, okay, so a lot of us were born in the trust territory of Hawaii, U.S. citizens, yes, and then statehood came. With statehood, a whole bunch of businesses came to Hawaii, you know, like McDonald's and all those big corporations came in. A lot of more white people came in to also. Um, the federal government was a bigger presence here. Uh, the, the Pohakalo Training Center over in, um, you know, on the Saddle Road, that got bigger. More Navy presence here and there. So, I mean, I think it was good for Hawaii, but, you know, there's, there's still some resentment because, you know, there's still people who are not happy that the kingdom fell in 1893. And, you know, statehood came as a result of that because Hawaii was a trust territory. So it's kind of mixed in that sense. I mean, but, you know, people have accepted it. 